Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackYear.com, and today we're going to break down the Shark Redill Full Face Helmet. Is it Riddle? Is it Redill? I don't really know. This helmet retails for $159 to $179, depends on if you're going for a solid color or for a graphic. This is the most affordable full face helmet in the Shark helmet range. Before I dive in super deep, you know, when I think of Shark, right, I'm always going to go to my Race Art Pro. That helmet is one of my favorite full face race helmets. It has been for many, many years. They've always done a great job with it. So what that does, kind of like it would with a rye or showy, it creates certain expectations for a product, okay? That's also a 700 some dollar helmet, right? Versus a $159 helmet. So what I'm driving at here is, you know, that's two different things. Making a $700 helmet and making a $159 helmet, those are two completely different propositions. So in this review, you know, you're going to hear me be a little bit critical of this, this product, right? And it's probably more due to the fact that I just have very high expectations for Shark based on my experience with the Race R Pro. Who is this helmet right for? I would say this is absolutely a street helmet only. It does incorporate the inner drop-down screen. This is a DOT certified only helmet. It does score four star out of five rating in the Sharp, the UK study. If that's something that you're invested in, right, that may be relevant to you. Not sure why this isn't coming over with an ECE certification on top of the DOT, but it is DOT only. The weight of the helmet was 3.55 pounds in a size medium on our digital shipping scale. I'll take a little sip from my baby monster. My wonderful wife, Marcine, somehow, when she was trying to buy a full-size one, bought me these little 10.5 ounce Baby Monsters. Now I have to drink three of these things a day just to get close to having two. Let's talk about sizing and fit. I measure 58 centimeters on the money with an intermediate oval head shape. Per the shark size chart, I'm going to be in a medium. That's what we have here in this Redil helmet. I got a good, comfortable fit. I would say it runs true to size. What I did notice is that, you know, the interior shape of the helmet, for the most part, is intermediate oval, but it leans just a little bit to the round side, so it just felt maybe a little more comfortable over in the ear area, which is something that can be, you know, appealing to street riders. Glasses compatibility. If you wear prescription eyewear, Shark does a great job of managing that. This is extremely glasses compatible. Okay. Before I dive into all, all the features and benefits, there's just something I want to get out of the way because I don't want it hidden at the end of the video, okay? Remember earlier when I said that making a $700 helmet and making $159, those are two very different things. Yeah, you could argue it's still a helmet, but there is an art to making true high-end products just as there is an art to making really good price point products. They're two different things. With this helmet, you know, just a couple of the things I saw when I tore it apart, not everyone's going to tear their helmets apart and put them back together. You know, just a little bit of the workmanship since some glue had spilled over on one of the cheek pad edges and made it really difficult to get out, and I'll show you that later on. And the, the piece of the trim here on the side, right out of the box, right, is the glue is really not holding on at all. So, you know, for a rider, if you get this, you know, that would absolutely be a problem for you. This one here, you know, even though it's kind of held in here in the front, that's going to come loose, right? And that's that whole gasket here. So for this reason, even this one is going to go back. Shark normally does a good job. They're a quality company and sometimes things just happen, but we need to be consistent with these reviews and show you our exact experience. So I just wanted to, to point that out. I don't want to totally shit can Shark because I do believe in the product, especially that high-end stuff. We have a couple other models we're reviewing right now too that I think they did a bang up job on, but I just wanted to share that with you. Features, benefits. It comes with a drop down inner screen. One thing I noticed here too is there's, there were, were, were no real detents with this. You know, it, it, it kind of, you know, in the up position, it, it, it definitely seems to hold itself there, but you can see 
you know, it doesn't lock into position, okay? Is that a problem while riding? Hard to say. You know, would it kind of shimmy its way down? It doesn't feel like it because there is some resistance there. I just wanted to point that out. So you're able to get a tinted screen. There's no need to replace the outer shield. The shield that comes on the helmet is clear and it is pin lock insert ready. The pin lock insert at this price point is sold separate of the helmet itself. Ventilation. Anytime you incorporate a drop down inner screen into a helmet, remember, when it's in the upward position, the area where you see my hand right now is going to be occupied by that drop down inner screen, okay? For that reason, you can't put any vents right here. Totally useless to put them there. So you're always, you know, it's a little bit of a trade-off. The convenience of that drop down inner screen, you're gonna get a little less ventilation. This is a helmet that I do not plan to ride in. If you own one of these and you've ridden in it, please feel free to share your thoughts. With that said, you know, you're gonna get a reasonable amount of cooling and ventilation. We have two intake vents up here. Nice action on these vents. They feel to be very high quality, right? The aerodynamics of this helmet, I'm sure, are very strong because that's an area where Shark is really dominant. Like, for example, that Race R Pro is the quietest full-face helmet that I've ever ridden in, okay? It's all the aerodynamics and the aero tuning that they do with these helmets, and they do that whether that's a price point helmet or that's a high-end helmet. So that's going to be one of the real benefits with the Shark price point stuff is you're still going to get some benefits from all that engineering that they do do. Intake vent here in the chin area. This is all going to blow air up onto the shield in this area right here to help with demisting as well as introduce air into the helmet in that area for cooling of the rider. Shield removal system, toolless. Push the button here in the center and pull forward. Pretty slick little system. Reinstallation is just as simple. Let's get it lined up in the channel and push back. The only thing I want to point out here is you see these teeth right here? When you're reinstalling this with a lot of other helmet shields, you need to kind of reinstall them in the upward most position with this one. It seemed to work best if I reinstalled it right about here to make sure those teeth were engaged and then from there pushed back. You'll hear a good positive click before you take the helmet for a ride. And look at all those detents too. Even though it doesn't have an exterior lock, that bottom detent is really strong. Okay, so it has a nice shield system. One of the better ones you'll see on a helmet that sells at this price point. The interior of the helmet, the fabrics felt really nice. Had a reasonable on-off effort. Uh, exterior exhaust ventilation, okay, is all managed through, there's, there's no exhaust vents that are molded into the shell back here. So all the exhaust ventilation is just gonna be managed through, you know, the interior here and the neck roll area in the back of the neck. There's nothing that I can see on the exterior of this helmet where the air that comes in the front is going to be leaving the back. No chin curtain option with this, but what you'll see what they have done here is they've molded right in this area here in the chin bar, kind of a plastic chin curtain all on itself. Got a little reflective detail back here. Double D-ring retention system. To remove the cheek pads, there are two snaps in the front, Velcro here towards the top leading edge, and then one snap here in the back. From there, grab the cheek pad here at the rear and pull out and rotate forward and then pull backwards, okay? You don't wanna pull it out at the front. They have a big tab here that slides into a channel and locks into place. Give you a look at the cheek pad. There are no molded speaker pockets that I can see here, so installing a universal communication device with this helmet could prove to be an issue. There might be some clearance issues. The sides there, the ears could get really tight with those speakers in there. We'll go ahead and pull that other cheek pad out. Grab it at the back. I think this was the side I had a little bit of trouble with. You know, I already kind of broke that loose. You know, you can see the, the glue right there. You know, perhaps there was just a little bit too much glue when it was manufactured. 
to pull the neck roll out, just grab it here at the back. It comes right out with the cheek pads being removed from the helmet. From here, you get to the front. There are some tabs, three in total, that you need to get your thumbnail or a fingernail behind to release before you tug on this. I couldn't get it to just pull out on its own. It's really seemed that you needed to release the lock tab. Liner itself, good quality here on the interior, right? Shark does a good job with that. Inside the helmet, there is another, you know, kind of a mesh foam. This appears, feels pretty thick too. Cap that's kind of glued in place right here in this area. Can, it really restricts the look you're gonna have at the vents as well. You can see a couple little holes here for the vents. You know, it's hard to really see much beyond that. There's some channeling back here. This is where the exhaust would kind of work to come through the top liner of the helmet. Okay. Padded double D-ring chin straps. <clears throat> oh, what do I think? I think Shark makes really good helmets. They do. You know, making a price point helmet is, you know, a bit challenging. You know, is this gasket thing that I, I found here on the bottom, is that an issue with everyone? Odds are it's not, you know, but I, I need to point that out here for you on this one. Beyond that, the quality of the pieces that they're using, the overall fit of the helmet, I think they did a good job. At this price point, right, with a drop-down inner screen, you know, that's a, a lot of value for it. And, you know, it is a four-star rating. I'd also like to put the shell of the helmet. It is a thermoplastic resin shell, one shell size through every size of the helmet too. I should have mentioned that early. I apologize for that. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section of this video. I answer all that stuff myself. I'm here to help you get a great experience from your next helmet.